Buonasera e ben... Good evening and welcome to the uh, Rimini meeting special edition 2020 and welcome to this session on a new vision for Europe. The 21st of July 2020 will certainly be remembered as a date that will mark a turning point in Europe. After a very long and difficult negotiation, the 27th heads of the member states decided by unanimity to approve a fund to relaunch Europe with 750 billion euro, an unprecedented sum in the history of Europe. We might talk about a paradigmatic change indeed. Uh, Commissioner Gentiloni in the previous session mentioned uh, the um, a new start for Europe and this new situation is calling for greater solidarity and co-responsibility to all member states so that all the member states benefiting from those uh, funding, from that funding to manage them with great efficiency and uh, looking forward with the forward-looking uh, attitude. Especially this fund is simply called Recovery Fund but the true title is next generation EU, that is, we're looking at the future of our children, of our nephews and of our, uh, and when we consider this huge investment and we are going to discuss this with the president of the European Parliament, David Sassoli, who really wanted to come to Rimini and he couldn't make it and we have an interview that we will present during this session and then we will talk with Luciano Fontana, director of uh, Corriere della Sera and Maurizio Molinari, director of uh, Repubblica newspapers, who will be joining us uh, online. Before starting this dialogue, I would like to invite the Secretary of State for uh, Foreign Affairs, International Economic Cooperation and Telecommunications of San Marino, Luca Beccari, who's going to give uh, a speech. Welcome. Thank you. I would like to thank the organization and the organizers for this great opportunity to uh, take part in this uh, session that is focused on a very dear subject uh, for the Republic of San Marino. I'm going to share some brief uh, uh, thoughts uh, from the point of view of a state that is not a member state of the EU. In fact, San Marino, uh, for political, historical, cultural, social and economic reasons, could be a fully-fledged member of the EU, but uh, it is still a third country. And together with other small states like Andorra and Monaco, is negotiating an association agreement with the European Union, a decision that started in 2013-14, a common decision to uh, follow this procedure of association to favor greater integration within the single market and a system of more structured relations with the EU, thus avoiding those that could be uh, weaknesses and difficulties for uh, full membership, that for a small sized country such as San Marino, with a small number of inhabitants also, that could be in place. We hope this negotiation will uh, reach an end uh, as soon as possible. Uh, there are also other negotiations that the EU is carrying out in terms of association agreements and neighborhood agreements. 
and also other membership uh, negotiations uh, are all very important. They show that uh, there is a, a trend towards a greater union that is not stopped, it's not stopped, it is alive and uh, this uh, union is not limited to the current composition of the EU. This is a very important starting point especially if we consider the subject of today's session, a new vision for Europe. Equally, the uh, assumptions uh, that on which uh, the EU was based by the Founding Fathers uh, after the war are still alive too. In the last century, after 50 years of uh, war and atrocious conflict, one of the most uh, felt needs was to establish peace within the European continent, as well as to establish and to create conditions for greater economic development of European countries, providing opportunity, com competitiveness factors on the skills of that time and of today. Well, these principles are still valid today, they're still relevant. So, when we uh, consider the future of the European Union, we cannot uh, avoid considering these uh, factors. I represent uh, a state that uh, had to face the COVID emergency with its own resources since it is not a member state of the EU, and now within the European continent, no one state can plan its own future and cannot overcome global challenges just counting on its own resources. Therefore, the European Union and the process of strengthening of the European Union in the European area is a process that cannot be ignored by any state. What about the future and the new vision of the future? Certainly, the European Union has been perceived by citizens more uh, as an economic union than a political union over the last uh, 20 years because of the introduction of the euro and the rules of the single market and also the introduction of those uh, actions to maintain stability markets have prevailed over the policies that could have cut across more areas and that went beyond uh, the economy. And today the COVID emergency takes us back uh, to one of the inspiring principles of the EU, that is solidarity, putting together common resources, not just to address uh, economic and market needs, but also to look at the future and to think about uh, a plan to grow in a way that can be positive for everybody. So the real challenge for the, e the future of the EU lies in the ability of the member states to uh, strengthen the European Union, perhaps uh, conceding some part of their political sovereignty and uh, giving greater power to the EU institutions, for example, the decision-making uh, procedure of the European Union, and this way, uh, this could become a project and a view that goes beyond the economic factors. Uh, to, before concluding, I would like to uh, quote uh, uh, the Pope's uh, uh, words on the future of Europe that I think are really relevant. Pope Francis said, at this time we really need unity among nations. We shall pray for Europe because Europe, so that Europe can have this unity, brotherhood unity, that was a dream for the founding fathers of the European Union. And the Republic of San Marino uh, joins in uh, this wish so that uh, these uh, pillars can be strengthened for a true European civilization. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, also for this uh, beautiful quote. Uh, thank you, uh, Secretary of State of San Marino.
let's now listen to uh, the president of the European Parliament, David Sassoli. I'm going to read the first question that uh, we sent him about the decision of the Recovery Fund. The European Union has demonstrated new ability to cooperate. What are the uh, main points for the European Parliament to continue on this uh, route uh, to uh, integration that cannot be taken for granted? Let's go listen to the answer of the President of the European Parliament. Well, yes, we are at a turning point for Europe. A stronger Europe, we have understood, can allow our citizens and companies and countries to respond with greater strength and uh, with greater ability to global challenges such as COVID. No country can uh, work and operate on its own. We have to work together and Europe can do it, including with a model of democracy that is not so common to find around the world. World. We have established some tools to face the emergency and now we have medium and long-term objectives. We, the Council, the Parliament and the Commission have defined these tools. The recovery fund, that is the possibility to have 750 million euro available for projects that can restart the economy and looking at common objectives, the Green Deal, digitization, resilience, which is very important, we have to be able to attract again many companies that left Europe and so we can be more self-sufficient and in this process as Parliament we want to be actors as other institutions and we need to specify our governance, that is how the Parliament can be linked to this process. Another important function concerns uh, uh, our own resources, that is, we don't want to uh, take uh, resources from the citizens through taxes, uh, through the uh, uh, transfers uh, uh, to, the Europe, to Europe, but uh, a capacity of self-funding. And this can be done with uh, new uh, levies on uh, plastic, on the financial activities and on the digital technologies. Over the last few months, we have seen so many companies increasing their turnover, so taxes must be paid where there are a lot of earnings, a lot of returns, and this is a valid principle always. So this way the union can have its own resources and have the ability to self-fund. And then we need a budget from here up to seven years that can be up to the standards of the challenge, because the recovery fund will end in three years, and then what will happen for the budget of the European Union. That's why some of the cuts that have been proposed do not, do not convince us. So for example, in research, how can that be possible? We said that we need more research to protect life, to help companies to transform themselves and to be greener. We need resources. And the same can be said as regards the social model, the, the European Social Fund. We have understood in this crisis how much uh, the uh, public health system is important uh, for the protection of citizens' life and we want to continue to fuel uh, resources into this and we need to look at the future generations as well. If we have to give something back in addition to the debts that we will make to young people, the Erasmus program cannot be cancelled, culture cannot be cut, research cannot be cut in terms of funding. So I think that there must be a balance between the expenses, uh, among the expenses indicated for the next seven years, and these must be part, that must be part of negotiations that have already started within the institutions to have the possibility of keeping the promise that we made last March. We didn't want to bet on the disintegration of Europe, we wanted to bet on its strength and on its uh, ability to be more useful to everybody. Director. Welcome to the director of Corriere della Sera, Luciano Fontana. Uh, welcome, welcome, and thank you for being with us. Good evening. So we've heard President Sassoli. This is a very ambitious program indeed uh, in terms of self-financing. This is something unprecedented in Europe. This is going to be a new experience. And also, when talking about Green Deal, resilience, digitization, this everything is new. 
in your opinion, is Europe n ready to uh, take on this new challenge? And Italy in particular, can uh, Italy uh, invest um, in the right way in order to achieve these goals? I think that Europe is at the turning point and has to tackle the real challenge in its life. Everyone has talked about the need of a turning point, which is necessary because in the past, people had started to be against Europe. Suffice it to uh, look at the surveys uh, uh, on uh, uh, Europe in uh, different member states, uh, Italy included, and the different uh, um, uh, politicians at a national level uh, became increasingly ho hostile to Europe. And that's because of the way Europe had tackled the uh, serious economic crisis in the past decade and uh, the way Europe had tackled the problem of uh, migration without solidarity. Then there was also the problem of Brexit. That all contributed to that. So what was at stake was the real existence of Europe and its project of solidarity among member states uh, uh, that uh, have uh, some uh, uh, national policies in common, but uh, mm, add to uh, uh, provide uh, solidarity uh, to the European Union, especially to the benefit of uh, smaller member states. I believe uh, that uh, there was a lot of fear. Francesco Giavazzi, in one of his articles uh, on Corriere della Sera, uh, said it very clearly. What was not made by the ideals, uh, maybe will be made by fear. But there is a lot of fear of this. There was a lot of fear for this crisis, which uh, affected uh, all citizens. And now, this fear concerns uh, the uh, economic conditions uh, of uh, all citizens uh, um, of the European Union. So. The uh, answer has been extraordinary. The answer of the European Union has been extraordinary. Also, uh, thanks to the uh, work uh, made by leaders such as Angela Merkel, uh, to her work in uh, putting together all the different projects. However, this change in pace and rhythm still has to be uh, developed. Uh, funds have to be made available as soon as possible, and then Italians have to prove that for us, Europe uh, uh, is not uh, uh, something to uh, abandon, something to uh, break down, but it's not even um, uh, a European Union that we have to exploit, as in projects must be up to the challenge, must be uh, dedicated to growth, innovation and research, uh, as said by President Sassoli. Projects need to generate the good debt mentioned by Mario Draghi in the uh, official opening of the meeting this year. Good debt means spending money there where it is necessary, as in spending for growth, for the future of young generations and of society as a whole. Uh, there are still many doubts in terms of European governance and in terms of uh, how different countries will behave, Italy included. Definitely, uh, um, the uh, problem of uh, migration was not tackled very well by the European Union. We're still waiting to be connected to Mr. Molinari. A second question to you. Is Italy ready to plan uh, projects uh, to make this major investment uh, possible and effective? Unfortunately, 
I have to say that uh, I'm very doubtful about that at present. My doubts are related to the way uh, uh, we uh, are behaving. Uh, there is no Italian, there is no political party in Italy which really knows uh, uh, why we lag so much behind and what is the rules of our problem because we don't grow too much and. Uh, uh, what is the root problem of our inefficiency? Uh, uh, we had uh, the uh, commission, a commission led by Colau, uh, which maybe uh, led to too many projects. Uh, then we had uh, uh, working groups uh, uh, talking about uh, different ideas and initiatives, but unfortunately, uh, uh, we were not able to focus on uh, a limited number of strategic initiatives uh, that we all know, i.e. investments on healthcare in order to uh, tackle a second wave of the pandemic, uh, research, uh, technological infrastructures, uh, green economy, and uh, education, first and foremost. Education is key for Italy. Italy has uh, a low education rate, a limited number of graduates, which doesn't make us competitive uh, throughout the world on the global market. So these five key points uh, should be clearly identified as soon as possible. We shouldn't waste uh, funds. We have to abandon uh, the principle whereby subsidies are always given. Now, there is a is there a managerial class and political party which is up to this challenge? Not really, in my opinion. Maybe sooner or later there will be, but a change in pace is needed today in Italy, and that requires. Uh, uh, common policies at governmental level that requires real leadership serving uh, the country. Unfortunately, this is missing today uh, in our country. However, I think it is our task, it is task of the media and a task of uh, uh, initiatives like yours, the meeting, to uh, push forward for that to happen. The political leadership has not been up to this challenge, but without this challenge, there will be no future for Italy nor Europe. Thank you very much, Director. Uh, to, tomorrow, there will be a meeting with the heads of uh, political parties where we will be talking about the challenges you have just mentioned. We will now have with us uh, Mr. Molinari, director of the newspaper La Repubblica. And now let's listen to the uh, second uh, answer given by President Sassoli. The question we asked him was the following. In recent years, we have seen an increase in diversification and difference between the north, the south, the east, and the west. Can the European Parliament be a place for better integration and mutual understanding? In short, can the European Parliament promote, promote further integration, even in order to uh, uh, use investments in a more effective way? Well, Jean Monnet uh, used to say that Europe uh, would be created by its own crisis, that the European Union could be created uh, by overcoming the crisis. And this is the classic example of the pandemic, which forces us all uh, to provide a common solution, common answer. Now, that means uh, that everyone has to be happy that there must not be differences between North, South, East and West. And uh, European institutions uh, and the European Council have made it clear that uh, uh, no one uh, will be defeated. Democracy means a compromise. Democracy means uh, the common interest. The recovery plan uh, must uh, pursue this direction. Everyone has to be satisfied with that. 
and uh, even uh, peoples in the south and in the north, uh, which oftentimes feel they are treated in a different way. We need to serve the interests of all. I think we are now on the way and uh, we have to continue on that way through a democratic process of reform. Europe living on vetoes uh, uh, does not enhance democracy. Veto unanimity, I think, uh, are tools that uh, all reasonable people understand are constraints today. So we need to make sure that democracy is useful for the life of citizens. And this can only be done by us. There's nobody else that can do it for us. And the answer to uh, such an important challenge, which is stop the world, uh, like COVID-19, is uh, something that has to be taken on with the tools of democracy, not like uh, other people do. Welcome to the director, Maurizio Molinari. Despite a problem, uh, he managed to connect with us. Thank you for connecting uh, during a journey. Good evening. I hope uh, uh, you were able to hear what was said by President Sassoli. He talked about uh, the uh, interests of citizens in the north that will become the interests of the citizens in the south and vice versa. Is it really likely that there will be a convergence of interests or maybe Will Europe continue to uh, negotiate even in future years? Will there be a convergence or will, will we still need to continue with negotiations? Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, the meeting, the Rimini meeting, is a unique opportunity and uh, is a very important uh, event for our country. Um, because uh, you have uh, many distinguished figures um, uh, speaking and acting for the common good. So I do believe a lot uh, in uh, uh, people who are intellectually important for a country. And uh, being here with us, uh, with the President of the European Parliament, is a privilege for me. To answer your question, I think that there is something new today, as in the reaction to uh, COVID-19 is pushing many European leaders to pursue um, a, a common path, which was unthinkable before. When Italy and Spain uh, were affected, uh, Europe did not react rapidly and reacted very badly. But uh, through the recovery fund, uh, Germany and France uh, were able to find a common language uh, pushed uh, for uh, a revolutionary integration project based on the need to uh, relaunch uh, the mostly affected economies throughout Europe. Looking at the texts uh, presented by France and Germany and approved by both of them, I think that uh, they sign a new beginning. And that has to push all the member states to take action. Uh, clearly, uh, 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 there, there will still be uh, uh, countries that uh, will be selfish. And uh, this has been clearly shown by frugal countries. Let me add a second question, Mr. Molinari. President Sassoli said on many different occasions uh, and uh, that was also said by Commissioner Gentiloni in a different uh, session, they both said that a change in rhythm, a change in pace uh, makes a Europe stronger from a ge geopolitical perspective. Now there's many uncertainties uh, from a geopolitical point of view. The old patterns have collapsed. Can Europe act uh, 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 stronger than before worldwide, yes, Europe, I think, can do it. 
And uh, I think that Angela Merkel gave us the direction when she talked about the digital rights. One of the most difficult and ambitious challenges today is to overlap the physical and virtual reality. And uh, the first person who said that was uh, Angela Merkel when she spoke at Davos uh, Forum two years ago. And this is her battle. Basically, Angela Merkel said that in the digital world, there's two giants. China, on the one hand, governed by only one party, and the other one is the United States, where actually the market is dominated by a limited number of major companies that are private and serve their own interests. Europe now has the opportunity to play its own role uh, to uh, foster citizens' rights in this uh, uh, global challenge. As in, online, it can defend individual rights. This is a major challenge. The European Parliament took a major step forward on copyright, and this is just the beginning. But that can give Europe and Italy uh, a prominent role. And I do believe in that. Thank you very much, Director. Now let's continue with the uh, third question to President Sassoli. And the question is the following. Uh, the, you, the EU is often perceived as something bureaucratic, very far from citizens. Is it possible, and if so, how to uh, improve a sense of belonging of European citizenship? And now let's hear the answer. No, yeah. Well, undoubtedly, uh, often we have stereotypes that is that Europe uh, uh, only uh, is lim is only limited to Brussels institutions. Of course, Europe is made of uh, Brussels institutions, but also national institutions. As national institutions are part of the European project, and the national parliament, national governments, regional authorities. Thinking of Europe as just based on the, the Brussels dimension means that uh, one has not understood the spirit of the European project. But uh, politics uh, is not all. Uh, politics can do a lot, but uh, there must be participation on the part of public opinion. How can we have a stronger Europe and to uh, redesign our treaties and to face together the challenges that will come in the future just by staying inside closed institutions, uh, uh, political institutions? That's not possible. We need the participation of citizens and Europe needs the citizens to make Europe because it is citizens that can understand first and foremost that some nationalist uh, divisions are outdated. There's no point in raising walls now and that the promotion of people is based on a big investment in solidarity. So if there is a call that the meeting knows very well and can launch very well that should be done is that to make uh, citizens participate concretely. We really need to be in touch with the public opinion and see what their interests are in terms of political life and to give them a message of responsibility. We are at a historical point, which is a decisive point for the future. How many challenges will we have to face? COVID-19 is not the last one. It's not the, it was not the first one. It will not be the last one. So we have to be in a condition to be stronger, to be more responsible, to be more aware. and politics alone cannot do it. We need citizens, we need men and women that the meeting has been able to gather for many years and launching positive messages of unity. We do not want uh, a Europe of the nations, but uh, a Europe of the peoples. That's uh, what uh, 
uh, used to be said at the time of the foundation of Europe, because of all the challenges that we have to face, uh, opportunities uh, like the one offered by the meeting will be increasingly important because uh, uh, this insists on the awareness of citizens and I think that uh, right now the message of the meeting is particularly important. Director Fontana, the problems that Europe has to face are definitely complex. They are hard to understand and to explain. Let's consider the uh, debate over the SEM and if we consider what was going on there and how it was it possible to understand what was going there. Well, it was a bit of a disappointment. And as the President Sassoli mentioned, uh, we really need to make participate to make citizens more participant participate. We have so many different member states in Europe, and uh, within this diversity, there are many problems to face that are not easy to understand. Well, first, let me say that uh, over the last few years. Europe has suffered from a double crisis in terms of lack of trust. We are recovering this, but we are just at the beginning. The first reason behind this lack of trust uh, is to be found in the way Europe managed the, the economic crisis and the crisis posed by migration. national selfishness uh, played a major part and the other reason is that uh, there are many uh, parties so-called populist parties well these parties uh, engaged a sort of campaign against Europe and this was just uh, an extreme propaganda that uh, was used to identify everything that didn't work in a country or in one's life uh, as the responsibility of Europe. Well, this is a bit of an illusion. They used to promote the idea that there was this European monster, this European giant that was imposing itself uh, with a lot of constrictions and constraints and without such a big monster we could uh, have gone back to a merry national life. We know that's not the case and we know in particular that uh, within international competition having uh, an economic space such as the single market is the only way to survive and we equally know that if we look at this uh, objectively and in real terms we know that we've had so many important things from Europe not just the single market but also an enduring peace uh, since the Second World War. This has been mentioned often but we've also had some fundamental freedoms such as the freedom of movement, uh, movement of capitals and then uh, uh, also the single market, the single currency. We've had the protection of uh, consumers' rights and then the possibility of uh, every EU country to be uh, equal with the other citizens of uh, member states uh, is really uh, a sign, is really evidence of freedom that was given us by Europe. Then there were uh, wrong answers, there is this bureaucratic perception that must be uh, uh, erased and how can this be done? How can we build a, uh, participated and aware European citizenship that is also proud. Well, this can be done by making Europe that something that goes beyond the economic union. Let's try and put together foreign policy, defense policy, research policies that are indispensable in global competition. This can also be done by strengthening uh, the mechanisms of democratic participation and making the European Parliament a decision-making centre that can respond really to citizens' needs. 
and also, as President Sassoli said, by reviewing the mechanisms of governance that have paralyzed the Union very often and had ex have exalted uh, national selfishness. It is also important to consider whether some important steps can be taken by a group of uh, uh, states that may be put more energy into the Union and leave uh, behind uh, those that have more doubts and more hostility. So we've seen uh, uh, country blocks such as the, e the ones in the east or the ones in the north. A lot has to be revised. There is a lot to do to build a European spirit. The Founding Fathers mentioned the um, United States of Europe, but if we can't get to the United States of Europe, we can try and reach something similar. And this is possible if everyone plays their part, if there is will, and if uh, the relationship with Europe is interpreted in the correct way and not in uh, um, wicked way. Of course, there are democratic constraints, but these constraints can uh, promote innovation and research, giving results that have been important over the last years. So, there is an important potential, the process has to be rebuilt and there is a big mountain that we have to climb in this respect. Director Molinari. Now, Mr. Fontana has just mentioned the issue of uh, uh, EU institutions that have to be uh, reformed. And this recovery fund is the result of close collaboration between French and Germany. What should uh, change in terms of governance of the Europe to be efficient, shared and accepted by its citizens? Well, I believe that uh, we can find an answer to this question by referring to what President Sassoli illustrated very clearly. President Sassoli talked about solidarity. So we should ask ourselves, what does it mean to take the notion of solidarity in our century? What is the meaning? This is important for Europe and for individual member states. I think that the agenda of uh, Ms. van der Leyen is uh, uh, relevant, partly relevant, it can be completed, and there is some room for manoeuvre where solidarity can be efficient and real, providing outcomes that can be advantageous for both families and individuals. These areas concern the fight against uh, inequality, protection from uh, climate change, and also digital rights that uh, we have already mentioned. The fight against uh, inequalities is really a new frontier because it refers to a kind of uh, malaise that uh, was not present in the 19th century. Inequality is not just about poverty, it's a, a state of being. There are families, there are social classes that feel that they can't make their dreams come true. At the core of inequality, uh, there is the issue of employment and uh, digital technologies can innovate dramatically the market, the job market, and those that cannot uh, retrain will lose their productivity potential, and that way they lose their hope. So uh, there must be professional education and training, and also there is the need to work on this malaise and to give clear answers to give people hope for the future. It is important for this commission because this commission started talking about inequality. The first one was Barack Obama in his campaign in 2012. Now, this terms is also a keyword of Ursula von der Leyen's commission. And then there is climate 
but climate has to be connected to solidarity. There are families uh, and people that are attacked by climate change. In the 19th century, the question was, are there climate change or do they exist? Well, now it's clear that they are there and they are a threat uh, for our existence. People that live close to uh, the sea uh, shores and the rivers uh, are at risk. And there are very aggressive uh, phenomena uh, that we have never known before. There are now um, weather conditions that are very dangerous in the Mediterranean. And there are so many people at risk because of this uh, uh, phenomena. In the green agenda of the new commission, these problems are included. But now, again, they have to be connected to solidarity. Let's think about our country and the issue of infrastructure. What does that mean responding to climate change? It means rebuilding infrastructure because there are bridges and motorways that cannot uh, resist the impact of uh, weather conditions, weather events. So there's the need to rebuild this infrastructure in Italy and in many other countries. And here we have a solidarity, this concept of solidarity, because before economic measures, we need the idea, we need the value. The need to respond to climate change means to, be so, to have solidarity with the others. This mutual solidarity must be present everywhere, also for responding to inequalities. We should rethink to uh, new social uh, welfare to guarantee the dreams of young generations. This is a challenge for our generation because we are experiencing a moment of great revolution in terms of economy, of habits and of uh, digital uh, technologies. So the answer that I want to uh, give you is uh, with solidarity. Solidarity interpreted within our time. Thank you, Director. I would like to ask now the same question to uh, both of you. And this question is taken from uh, Joseph Knives' uh, book, The Power of the 21st Century. He distinguishes between two different powers, uh, the art power that depends on the armed forces and uh, economic forces and soft power that is a strong influence through cultural, political and economic orders that must be efficient. And recently, he also added the smart power that is the capacity to explain reality going beyond the dichotomy between reality and confusion. Well, without focusing too much on the terminology, is it possible that Europe can become a smart power? And I'm particularly interested in this. What will the contribution of uh, communication media be for this to happen? That is overcoming this dichotomy between complexity and confusion. Director Fontana. Sì, naturalmente. I think that um, Europe in the future. Uh, can become a smart power. That's uh, within uh, the European DNA, that's within its uh, history, its tradition, and uh, uh, future innovations. I don't think uh, uh, that uh, uh, Europe uh, um, uh, will focus on uh, hard power. Our strength is based on innovation, creativity, and uh, ability to promote culture, education, and innovation. That generates power because contemporary revolutions and digital revolutions are based on that. The media are just um, one part uh, uh, of this smart power. 
some uh, uh, patterns of uh, uh, clearly change, some uh, uh, communication patterns have radically changed, and that questions the existence itself of the media. Just to think that uh, in the digital world, uh, the speed uh, of uh, news dissemination uh, is uh, extremely, f extremely fast uh, at the expense of the accuracy of information. I think that the role of the media is uh, uh, to uh, uh, focus on accuracy, pluralism, being able to translate that into the digital world and uh, promoting exchange, the creation of new ideas and the promotion of uh, new horizons. We have to do that um, independently uh, with a far-sighted approach uh, by focusing on the uh, different key topics as in inequalities, climate change, uh, 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 green transformation, uh, need to promote uh, uh, equal opportunities in education to all European citizens. If we are able to do that, uh, we will have done a good job. Knowing that we are just the one part of the jigsaw puzzle, an important piece though, which uh, has to enable citizens to understand this complexity. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fontana. Maurizio Molinari, you have the floor. I think that uh, uh, the challenge for Europe in this century is smart power. In Europe, there is uh, many excellence centers, uh, not just in uh, Munich, not just in the UK or Barcelona, but also in the Netherlands, in Denmark. Uh, Italy must be ambitious enough uh, to have uh, some of these uh, excellence centers. Europe can indeed make the difference uh, in the challenge of the digital world. Only if rights and development are the priority. I think that this is the challenge of us, of our generations as European citizens. The state of law has to be uh, translated into the digital world. Digital rights must be conceived. The fact that uh, there are no digital rights at present does not mean that they don't, they can't be created. This is the key challenge of smart power in the new century. Clearly, we still need to invest in the development of new technologies and education in order to compete with the major giants uh, we have, uh, as in China and the US. And in that, that uh, there is uh, a peculiar role that Europe uh, can play and that uh, the media can play in the communication system. And this role can be summarized in two words, uh, interaction and transparency. Newspapers are by now uh, organizations uh, uh, producing content uh, on different platforms, uh, paper, videos, um, sound, uh, artificial intelligence in the future, and augmented reality. Our contents are not just put on paper, but uh, on different platforms. However, once we use the different platforms, there must be interaction between us and the readers. And this is key. Readers must be able to interact with us. The new technologies and artificial intelligence will enable us to do that. So journalists will have to continue doing their job searching the news, verifying sources, be serious, being accurate. At the same time, they will have to be humble in increasingly interacting with the readers, listening to the readers, believing that readers are smarter than us. In the end, the dialogue between newspapers and readers will promote interaction that will lead to a better uh, collective knowledge. But this has to be based on transparency. Our newspapers must be transformed into something transparent, where people understand what we do, how we do it, and where we try and involve the users and the readers in what we do. 
This is going to be an extraordinary revolution, as Fontana has said, but uh, we have to take on that challenge. Thank you very much uh, to Luciano Fontana. Thank you very much to Maurizio Molinari uh, for your words uh, and for the many remarks you have shared with us. Thank you and uh, goodbye to all of you who have joined us. Uh, the Rimini meeting uh, has always focused on uh, uh, Europe. Many uh, editions of the meeting have been specifically dedicated to uh, Europe. In the future, we will continue to follow the European integration and we will promote uh, responsibility and active citizenship. Indeed, we are convinced that uh, Europe has a great mission for itself and the world as a whole. We try to involve as many people as possible. Uh, we will continue to do so in some sessions of the meeting this year. We will do that in the future. And I hope that you will continue to join us in this great adventure of uh, um, uh, promoting uh, Europe as a continent which is full of values. Thank you very much.